All right, so we are recording. This will be the first recording that we have done in Miss Baker's um, Math 3 class this year. And so hopefully everybody um, will understand that I will call you out if you are acting foolish during the video. Um, so we are going to have a great semester. If we look at the transformations, what I wanted us to look at is each function, we've got all kinds of functions, but this is just our basic y equals x squared. y equals x squared, if you put a 1 in for a and a 0 and a 0, then we are going to have our perfect parabola. Um, 1 times 1 gives me 1, 2 times 2 gives me 4, 3 times 3 gives me 9. So I'm all the way up here at 9. I wanted us to look at what happens when we change our variables. So, someone impress me. How did you describe changing your A by getting larger? We said it got thinner. We yeah. said it got thinner. What's another word we used? Narrow. Anybody? Nar na skinny? Narrow. It gets skinny. It gets more narrow. All of those are great ways to describe. So it, it actually, if you change the number in the front, it is actually going to change the shape of the graph. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. By changing our A or the number <laughs> in the front, it's going to change the shape of our graph. I'm going to come back down to 1. Now, the next thing that you were supposed to check out is what happens if I change A to a decimal. It's getting bigger, it's getting wider, it's getting fatter, it's a stretch, it's a stretch. See, we're either making our parabola more narrow when we get above numbers above one, but how could you represent numbers, what are these? Point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. They're a number... Could it be a frac? It's a proper fraction, right? This is like one tenth, um, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. All of these are proper fractions where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Um, for those of you who are math nerds like me, I want you to think of it this way. When I get to numbers that are larger, it's kind of like our slope. Our slope here we're going up four and over one. Does that make sense? Remember the slope of a line, your rise over your run. Even with the parabola, you're still going up larger. If I bring that slope down to one, this is where we normally are, but if I make it a decimal, that is stretching my slope to like up one over ten. It spreads it out. Um, what happened? What happens when we have zero? Why do I get a zero there? It's just undefined. But uh, there's a reason. If I put a zero in here for a, what is zero times anything? Zero. zero. So if I put a zero in there, um, that is going to give me. I don't know what I did. Oh no, come back here. Um, that is going to just give me zero. Everything turns into a zero. Um, let's change this to, what do we go to next? Negative 1? What happens when we go from 1 to negative 1? Someone, what, how did you describe that? It goes down. Instead of being up, it goes down. down. What's, flip. flip? Okay, I like flip. That's a great way to describe it. What's another way? Oh, I love it. Thank you, Ashlyn. Perfect. It's a reflection. Rem write that word down. It's a reflection over the x-axis. We are flipping it. We are reflecting it over the x-axis. Now, what happens when we get larger? The larger our A gets, it's still getting more narrow. It's just reflected. What happens when we still have those decimals? It's still getting wider. So. The, the absolute value of that number, of the number in front, that still determines whether it's wider or narrow. But the negative 
that actually does your reflecting about the x-axis. Good. All right. B, what happened when we moved the B around? Does it change? Does it change the shape of the parabola? No. no. So when we're changing our B, as it gets larger, it moves to the right. As it gets smaller, it moves to the left. Now, I want to make sure I point this out to you. Look at the equation that you have right here. The equation says x minus b. The equation says x minus b. So if I change this to a plus, which is what most of us are used to, if I change this to a plus, what's going to happen to it? If it's a minus, a negative, it's going to go left or right, and then the negative's going to take it to the right. So the positive takes it to the left. Wait a second. How do I hit enter? I know, I don't know how to get back over here. Oh, come back. All right, so now let's see. If it's negative, it's moving it to the right. If it's positive, it's moving it to the left. What I need you to see is that this is backwards. The horizontal shift, ooh, that's a good word to remember. The horizontal shift is backwards. If it's minus, a number, it's moving it to the right, and if it's a negative, <laughs> negative becomes a plus, it's moving it to the left. What does the C do? What happens when we change that C? If we, ch it's just move. does the shape of the parabola change? No. The shape of the parabola is not changing. It if you're going positive, it's moving that parabola up. If you're going negative, it's moving that parabola down. The shape isn't actually changing. You're just seeing more of the parabola when you move it down. All right. So there were a couple of other questions that I think I had in there. Let's take a second to look at those questions. So we moved it left, right up, down, we change the size with the A in front. Hopefully you all have three statements that you have learned. And so somebody impress me. Raise your hand if you can tell me what this for, if this is my function, what is that for in front going to do? Right, it's going to change the shape. Very good. Malin, you're absolutely right. It's going to change the shape. Is it going to be skinnier or wider? It's going to be skinnier. Perfect, Summer. What is this minus 1 going to do? If we have x minus 1, it's going to move it horizontally. Is it going to move it to the right or the left? It's backwards. So the minus one you would think would move it to the left, but it actually moves it to the right. Um, what does this plus five do? It's, it's going to go up. Um, if you've got, look at your function. If you had a minus minus, then that's going to make a plus. Okay? So if it's actually, it, since the original function is minus, then this would be a positive one, okay? It's backwards. Um, what happens if I put a 2 on number two on B? What happens if I put a 2 in the front? What do you think? Blake, what happens if I put a 2 in the front? What happens when we change that first number? Is it going to be more narrow or is it going to be wider? No? Anybody? It's going to be more narrow. Two takes it up. It's so moving up faster. 
This plus 5 is not in parentheses, so what's going to happen with that plus 5? David, do you know? Come on, y'all. you got to talk. We can't not talk the whole time. Jimmy, what happens with the plus 5? There's a plus 5 hanging at the end. What's going to happen to it? I don't. Sharon, do you know? I know there's got to be more than two people in this class who know what's going on. Kobe, what happens? What's the plus five at the end there? Up five. Up five. Thanks, Summer. <laughs> <laughs> what is the neg the negative in the front of our third one is gonna be our flip, right? Ashlyn, you reflect over the x-axis. What's the plus three inside the parentheses gonna do? Perfect. Good, David. It's going to take us to the left. How many? Was it David or was it you? Oh, sorry, Rashad. Sorry, you're absolutely right. Sorry. It's going to be three to the left. So my other Mr. King, what's the minus two going to do? Down two. All right. So are we seeing our relationship here? I asked you to pull up the exponential. I asked you to pull up the exponential and see what happens when we change things <clears throat> in the exponential. Um, what happens when we change that A? It's gonna, does it, it, gets, does steeper. The, it oh. gets steeper, right? It's yeah. still changing the shape. Um, if we make it a decimal, is it going to stretch it out? Yeah. No, it's gonna get... So it's still stretching it out. What happens when we flip, make it negative? It's going to get it's still doing a reflection over the x-axis, right? That A is still reflecting over the x-axis. What happens when we change the B? It gets real steep. It starts to come so in this case, is my B moving us left and right? No. No, in this case, my B is not moving us left and right. What if I make it a decimal? Um, it goes all the way. It goes down instead of going up. That's something we're going to look at when we're working with exponentials. If this is a decimal, it's going to be going down. On Wednesday, most of you are really going to like my um, lesson on Wednesday. We are, I'm going to teach you um, how to be a millionaire. I'm going to prove to you that I can make every single one of you a millionaire by the time you're 60. That's just I'm, I'm telling you, I, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. I'm going to prove to you that you can be a millionaire. C moves us up and down again. So how do you think we move left and right? If you go in here, and let's put in a plus, oh, plus, oh, come on, stay up there. X plus, I don't know why it's not letting me. If you add to this X in here, if you add and subtract to that X, that actually is going to shift you left and right because it's inside the function. Anytime you want to go left or right, it's going to be inside parentheses. If you want to go up or down, it's going to be hanging at the end. And if it's a number in the front, it's going to change the shape. Does that help? Okay, so we are going to look um, at exponential functions tomorrow with our zombie lesson. You guys are going to love... How many of you watch The Walking Dead? Hope, I, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to the recording. You guys want to say goodbye to the other Math 3 class? Bye. Bye. So we'll see you tomorrow.